Hey gang, we're in South Carolina now and we're at a small town called Elko, Elko, South Carolina. We're about 40 miles east of Augusta and we're at a very, very small cemetery called Elko Number no. 2. There's an Elko Number no. 1 right up the road as you come in on the left and Elko Number no. 1, I guess back in the olden days, was the White Cemetery and Elko Number no. 2 was the Black Cemetery. So we are back at the very end of the road. And I want to thank Becky Dingo who suggested this story. And I really wanted to come here because this is the story about a woman in the early 60s who was buried, actually buried alive. But the good news is, well, I'm going to tell the story. She survived. All of our other stories, nobody survived. They died horrible deaths inside the coffin. So let's take a walk here and I will tell the story of Essie Dunbar. Essie Dunbar, she was about 30 years old when this horrific thing happened. And what happened was she, they thought she had died of some type of epilepsy, some type of seizure, and the doctor just said, uh, she's dead. And they put her in a coffin and scheduled her funeral for the next day. They would have buried her right away, but her sister lived in another town, not too far away from here. But they were waiting for her, but she was late. So they had the funeral the next day and she wasn't showing up. So they finally said, bury her. So they buried Essie in her coffin. And Soon after her sister came, she said, I want to see my sister one more time before, before I die. So could you please open, could you please dig her up? And they did so, they dug her up right here. And to everyone's horror and surprise, Essie was alive. They brought up the coffin opened the coffin and she, they said she literally s sat up and smiled. Can you imagine? She lived for another 47 years and then she passed away, I think it was 1962. And she was buried here in her permanent resting place. Now I came here, of course, and I'm searching and I did find her sister, I think it's her sister, because you look at the years, that sister who came looking for her, and it may not be her, but I could not find, I could not find Essie, but this is where she's supposed to be. And her sister's grave is right over here. If this is her sister, now I know Dunbar's a very common name here, but what was intriguing is the, this is Cora Lee Dunbar, 1908 to 1985, but 19, oh, I'm sorry, 1903. And Essie was born in the early uh, 1890s. So I think there's a separation of 10 or 11 years between these two, the two women here. So the time is right. This could be her sister, but I did search I'm thinking, you know what, I'm, I'm thinking that, I'm thinking that she, she, there's, there's this open spot right here next to Cora, and the reason it seems that way, let me, I don't want to step on these, but I'll give you more of a big picture look of what's going on here, and you can see the front row, we've got three, and then lining them up, pretty much lining them up. There's an open spot back left there, the next row up. Now what's interesting is if you start exploring this graveyard, well there's more graves on the street, but there are a lot of graves back here. Look at this. Pashanta S. Ryan's passed in 1982. And there's a footstone and a headstone and a gravestone, and they're all back here. 1982, that's not that old. 
Like I said, there's a grave here I saw. I did explore back here. I checked every grave. Every single grave, and I did not find Essies. Now, some of them are missing their nameplates. But I have to believe, like, what's the coincidence, even with the, the Dunbar name, how coincidental, coincidental with the years that that wouldn't be her sister? 1988. And it looks like someone has been here for Harry Geach Williams pretty recently with some nice flowers. That looks better. Rest in peace, Harry. Yeah, but if you if you walk back here, it's very intriguing. Very bad footing. There's a lot of hidden things under the ground. Holes and all kinds of stuff. But let's let me take you back here a little bit and show you some of the the graves are there just in the woods. Back here. Now over here, there looks like there would be, in the old days, it was a maybe a family plot. There's four markers. There's four markers here. What's this? And I do see some nameplates. Well, maybe we'll get luck. Maybe we'll find Essie together here. Who knows? Rosa. Rosa A. Shawls, looks like. I didn't look at, I didn't see these before. Nope. That is not her. Now look at these. These are, these are really beautiful. Oh, there looks like there used to be, used to be a gate on there, maybe. A low, a low swinging gate. I see hinges. Go over this way. So we have a little clearing here in the woods, and there are some graves up here. Look at that. Pretty much all overgrown and forgotten, like this one. Sad. Eugene Simpkins, Private U.S. Army. October 14, 1940. August 10th, 1978. Thank you for your service, Eugene. Boy, you, you don't, there's just graves all over the place under the, the leaves. This is Norman O'Neill, 1918, 1976. And he has a nice, nice nameplate here. Straighten this pant up. World War II. Look at that. Wow. Somebody's got to come. Somebody's got to come and dig that out for Norman. Rest in peace, Norman. Thank you for your service in World War II. Greatest generation. Greatest generation. 
More graves there. But no Essie. If anyone knows where Essie is, please put it in comments and we'll do a post. Really want to see where she's buried. Again, I've been walked through here, I've already looked at all these. It's a 1946 death. It's like 1949. Hard to read these. Let's look at a couple more before we leave. Look at this one. Cannot. Looks, oh, Oliver. Maybe Oliver. Can't read the last name. Might be Stokes. Common name in the area. Here. See, they're just random, randomly placed here. It's a marble one. Pretty much illegible. Well, we can go on and on back here. Let's head our way back to the street. some more. No Essie though. Another vet. South Carolina private. 233rd base unit AF, AAF. World War II. 1923 to 1962. Joe R. Jefferson, thank you for your service. Well, I think that's going to do it. We can navigate out of here. All right, guys, I'm on to the next. I'm on to the next stop. Oh boy, I got vined. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Sorry about that. On, on to the next stop. In South Carolina, heading eastbound, northeast. Eventually make it to the coast. And again, if anybody knows where Essie is, let me know and I'll post it. See ya.